Linda Masarira, a mother of three, was arrested during a demonstration against abuse of human rights and inequalities in Zimbabwe. When she was thrown into remand prison without trial, prayers were made, legal routes were followed, but she was not released to the expectations of those pursuing the matter. Now that she is out, she grants ZimDI TV News an exclusive interview to tell us who is Linda Masarira, where is she coming from and where is she going. She starts by telling us the bad experiences in Chikurubi Rimand Prison. Um, almost every day was a bad experience because it's not easy for a human rights activist to be watching injustice, to be watching other people being oppressed, to be watching other people being bullied, being beaten, being assaulted and all. It, I was always at loggerheads with the prison guards because I'm one person who speaks out irrespective of where I am. I used to speak out to the extent where the, the officer in charge once told me and I would tell him, no, I'm a human rights activist, no talk up right, I have to talk. And she would go like my prisoners are our rights and would argue over the constitution and all and say, No, no, no. But these rights are supposed to be there. Um fortunately enough I didn't get to eat prison food because my friends were bringing food for me, but the a lot of people had no visitors. At the prison, they boil vegetables with no salt. That's for lunch, that's for supper. Porridge in the morning with no sugar. And the bad part is donors come donate sugar, they donate cooking oil, they donate all those foodstuffs to make life easier for the prisoners. But the prison guards take all those things and go with them home. They say the, those things are ours. Prisoners don't have the right to eat good food. So you see, those are some of the things that have to be corrected. And I'm, I, I actually intend to file for a commission of inquiry on prison services. We really need to know what has to be done and what doesn't need to be done because prisoners are being treated like some piece of rubbish. What motivated you into activism? Um, naturally, I'll say um, even in school, they knew that Linda wouldn't tolerate oppression. And I was a trade unionist at uh, NRZ. They tried to bribe me, they tried to do a lot of things during my time at NRZ to stop making noise, to stop fighting for money and justice and all. And they eventually fired me on three months notice last year, on the 31st of July, because I had filed for a lawsuit for my unpaid salaries and all. And um, since then they haven't paid me my money. So it's just like in October I said to myself, why should I keep on sitting yet I can make a difference? And I say to myself, who is going to make that difference? If all of us are just going to sit down and say things are bad, who is going to start making the first move? That is what motivated me. That is what gave me the power to fight on. You know, it's not easy. At NRZ, we have about 4,000 employees. And I was looking at 4,000 employees with no salaries. 4,000 employees who have lost their livelihoods. And how many children out of those 4,000 4, employees? So it was just evident that this country is headed for doom. You look at the amount of uh, teenage prost prostitutes. So it's what I was seeing in the so social space. I stayed in Wange when I was working uh, based in Wange. Wange colliery staff wasn't being paid. And what they were going through and all, it's just those things. And I'll try to relate to the time I grew up in the 80s where everything was normal and say, where have we gone wrong? Why have we been quiet? Our parents failed us because they were afraid because of the things that they had seen. But now we are the youth. We are the future of tomorrow, and we cannot keep quiet and watch our lives go down the drain. That is what has motivated me to fight, and I'll keep on fighting on until we get the results that we need. You, you were released. Where to from here in terms of fighting? I'm going to keep on fighting. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll, 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 take you, I'll take you home now. Um, you have kids out? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, who was taking care of them when, when you were in incarceration? Um, my kids were being taken care of by my maid until my mother took the little one who was three and my firstborn was in, his, he was in high school, he was in boarding school, he is in form four, he's starting his examinations. You are watching Zindi TV. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've seen the, the, the machine that the state has. Um, do you fear to, to, to demonstrate again? I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid, though I just came back with a 
with a new narrative of, of way that I want to do things. Because I realized that we are demonstrating, but we're not getting the results that we want because the state has decided to unleash a reign of terror on activists. So I've actually come up with another idea, which I've discussed with my colleagues, Patson and all, that we have to change the way we are doing things. The demonstrations have failed. People are being beaten up. People are being abused. Some are being tortured and made. People are being abducted. Why should we continue with the strategy, which is making people go into situations which we do not want? We are fighting against those injustices. We're fighting against torture. We're fighting against abuse. But if this demonstration route is not working, we have to fight for the alignment of laws to the Constitution of Zimbabwe because the Constitution is the supreme law of this land. And the Constitution allows us to demonstrate. But they are unleashing the reign of terror using police officers and state security agents against activists so that they instill fear in us, so that they silence us. But we will not be silenced. I, I don't regret because actually they took me out of the streets of Ferrari because I was demonstrating and protesting for my rights. Um, but I also managed to go into prison and fight for prisoners' rights. So it's just like God wanted me to be in prison, also to fight for those who couldn't speak for themselves. And I actually feel great and honored that at least I managed to make a difference for the female prisoners in Chikolubi female prison. What, 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 what was their condition like then? The condition at Chikolubi maximum prison is terrible. You know, they are still using that... that, that um, um, that style that they used to use during the Smith era, where they try to, to, to remove your dignity, they try to degrade you, they try to, to make you like you're not a person. So I had to fight. I was always in the officer in charge's office asking her, what is the point of, of this place being Zimbabwe prison or correctional service? Because there's nothing correctional about it. You will see that there are young girls, teenagers who kill their children, and they'll be called like, Iwe Mondi, we have you know, and they would like try to to remove your 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 sense of 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 you of of being a person. They they degrade you to that level where you feel pity for yourself, and they try to make the situation harsh. And there's basically no rehabilitation, etc. And when I got there, prisoners on remand were being made to go to the garden and they would go and fetch water in a sewer pond with no shoes and all. At least I managed to stop that. I managed to stop remand prisoners from going to work because I would say, what's the point of remand prisoners going to work yet they've not been sentenced? They will only go to work when they've been sentenced. So there, there are a couple of changes that I made. You are watching Cindy TV. Um, my, my kids were, we were with my maid when I was here in Arari, but my mother had to take the little boy because he's still young. Yes. Can I have the ages and names of the kids? The three-year-old one is what? The three-year-old one is called... Pukwasha is 14, Quite. and Kuzakwasha is uh, 17. When you were in incarceration, did you fear for them or you thought they were safe? I thought they were safe. I thought they were safe. I prayed for them every day, though I missed the small one badly. And Linda, whilst you were in jail, um, where did you going around that you were not receiving much support from the women's rights activists as these groups? Um, did you get any moral or financial support when you were in the remote prison? I, I got from a, f a, a few groups, one or two if I'm not wrong, but one of them is of um, ladies who are based in UK, who actually came from UK. And here yeah, in Zimbabwe, the, 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 the prominent women groups, I didn't see them. And I'm still waiting to hear what they're going to say because I know they always have excuses and all that. But maybe it's because we've got different ideologies and different way of doing things. People don't understand the way I do things. And even men themselves, they ask me, why do you do things this way? Because I no longer believe in this uh, workshop thing, sitting in hotels and doing things. They don't bring the desired result. Because people have been having workshops, having here forums, talking for years, but we didn't get the result. Now it's action time. We need to act to turn around things in Zimbabwe. I'll take you back to, to the kids. Were they aware that you were, you were in prison? Yes, they were aware. How did they get to know? I was, uh, was told by my mother and my kids in Mutari. The firstborn was the one who was told by my maid. 
and the little ones I didn't want them to know but the people I was sharing the house with because it's, a, it's an NRZ house they're the ones who were like ah, your mother is in prison and all that and then my maid had to cancel the internal oh, mommy's coming soon and all Subscribe to our YouTube channel ZimDI TV News and be the first to receive breaking news and stories making headlines and also subscribe to our website ZimDITVNews.com and never miss a story. Watching Cindy I TV.